Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we're in Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. Luke 2, get your Bible. If you can, open it up to Luke chapter 2 and verse 1. We'll begin in just a minute. The Scripture Verse by Verse website is found at the Bible versebyverse.com. Go there, study God's Word with me, verse by verse, four complete series going on five, going back 37 years to the beginning of Scripture Verse by Verse. It's all there for you. Choose, click, listen, bring your Bible. That's all you need at the Bible, versebyverse.com. <clears throat> and Father, we pray that you would sanctify us by your truth your word is truth in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered, taxed, the entire Roman Empire. Caesar Augustus was the absolute ruler of of the Roman Empire. So when he sent out a decree, you had no choice to obey it, and that would include the Israelites, who were under the jurisdiction of the Roman Empire at this time. Two, and this registration was first made when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered every one into his own city. The registration took place because everybody had to pay a poll tax. Everyone was told that they must return to the hometown of their original ancestors. Verse 4, And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. We're introduced here now to Joseph, first time in Luke. And Joseph was living way up north, northern Israel, little village of Nazareth, where Mary was, where the angel Gabriel was sent to, to tell Mary that she would be the mother of the Messiah. So Joseph was there. But now because of this decree, which was to register for taxation, he must take about an 80-mile journey south to Bethlehem, which was just outside, just a few miles outside of Jerusalem. Five, to be registered with Mary, <clears throat> excuse me, to be registered with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. Mary rode along, and she was ready to give birth any day, too. So, tough journey for Mary. 80 miles on the back of a donkey, nine months pregnant. But Mary and Joseph knew the scriptures. So no doubt they realized that the Son of God would be born in Bethlehem, which is where they are headed. So you have Caesar, who made the decree, which resulted in Joseph going to Bethlehem. Caesar had no idea that he was being used by God to fulfill scripture prophecy concerning his son. Verse 6. And so it was while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. In other words, Mary had her child in Bethlehem, just as the scriptures said that she would. They knew it would happen. But notice verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger 
because there was no room for them in the end. Now, that probably took Joseph by surprise and Mary too, I'm thinking. They knew they were fulfilling Scripture. They knew that the Son of God would be born in Bethlehem. She's nine months along. They knew it was going to happen. Try not to put God in a box and think that I know what his will is going to be. But, boy, I've got to tell you, if I was Joseph, I would be thinking, well, we're sure that God the Father, he will have a nice room available for us someplace in Bethlehem. After all, this is his son that's going to be born. But they couldn't find a place. Inns weren't much better than barns back in those days. I've seen some of the inns. And they're not much to look at. So I can't imagine what the barn looked like. But that's where Jesus was born, in a barn. And of course, as the Son of God, and as the King of kings and Lord of lords, he certainly could have been born in a palace. God the Father could have arranged things so that he would have been born in a palace. But God chose to do it this way. And we're going to find out, I think, why. Verse 8, And there were, in the same country, shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Shepherds used to gather their flocks together in the evening and set them in an area where they would be kept safe. So these shepherds, are just relaxing on a nice, quiet, dark evening out in the country, which is where they were supposed to stay. Not the sheep, the shepherds. People didn't want any part of these guys. Verse 9, And lo, an angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were very much afraid. In other words, suddenly, an angel just appeared out of nowhere, which seems to be the norm for angels, with few exceptions in Scripture. But this angel appeared out of nowhere on this dark night, and the glory of God, which was a great light, lit up the entire area, like turning on a spotlight in a dark room. And the shepherds, startled, startled. yeah, I'm sure they were startled, but I think, uh, I think it was more like of, a, of an understatement to say they were startled. Can you imagine? They were very much afraid. Verse 10, And the angel said unto them, Fear not. That gives you a hint. They were afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. The angel says, I'm bringing good news to you. That would be the shepherds. But not just to the shepherds, to all people. But it did include the shepherds. In those days, shepherds were excluded from everything because people didn't like them. People did not trust them. Shepherds could not come into a town. They had to stay out in the country because people didn't trust them. They had the reputation of being dishonest and thieves. A shepherd's testimony was invalid in the court of law back in those days because they had such a reputation for being liars So when the angel appeared first to the shepherd and said, I got good news for you, he had to appear to the shepherds. I guess he didn't have to, but God was being gracious because if he would have appeared to somebody in a palace or to somebody in their living room sitting at home in Bethlehem or anybody, they would have said, hey, God has good news for me and all the people. 
but they would naturally assume that doesn't include the shepherds because they're such miserable wretches. But God made it a point to appear to the shepherds first and tell them that the good news was for them also. Because you know what? I don't think the shepherds would have believed that they were included in that good news if the angel didn't actually appear to them. And again, the angel says that a Savior is for you as well as for everyone else. The Savior will be born in the city of David. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. So being born in that barn would be unusual. But this is how they would determine which baby in Bethlehem was the Son of God. All babies look alike. Jesus was not born with one of those halos over his head. The sign given, he, he, he'd be in the barn, along with all the animals, in a feeding trough. That's, that's where you're going to find and another baby in Bethlehem that was laid in a feeding trough of an animal, only the Son of God. 13. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, they were just getting used to probably that one angel. And all of a sudden, he disappears. Or maybe he stayed there. No, he didn't disappear. But the sky is filled with angels. And they start singing. From one angel to a multitude of angels. It was like an angelic choir. But it sounded good. I bet it didn't sound like Mick Jagger in the Rolling Stones or whatever group is popular today, like is so often the case in modern evangelical churches with their rock groups and their light shows and their fog machines and everything else that mimics the world. This was a beautiful, angelic choir singing heavenly songs to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It was not a performance. It was worship. And if these shepherds were startled by the one angel, which they were, just imagine how they felt when all the other angels appeared and the sky was filled with them. Can't imagine. But it says in 13 and 14, suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Actually, I have to correct myself because I said it was an angelic choir and they were singing. Uh, no, they were not. They were saying. They were reciting. But it was, it was praise. The Bible doesn't say that angels sing. Did you know that? It doesn't. Some of the modern translations that are free and pervert the word of God say that the angels were singing here, but that's not the word. That's not the word that was used. It's saying. They spoke. The angels don't sing. The angels are great. The good angels are great, but they don't sing. The redeemed Christians, sinful man who have been redeemed by the blood of Christ, are seen singing even in heaven, but the angels are saying. Maybe it's because they don't have the joy that you and I have because we have been redeemed from hell. Whatever the case, you got a sky full of angels and they were saying and they were praising God, peace, goodwill toward men, in other words, the reason for Jesus coming to earth was for God to show goodwill toward men by dying on the cross and paying for our sins on the cross so that we wouldn't have to go to hell. And with that, I'll stop. Study all of God's word with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. If you'd like to be a part of Scripture Verse by Verse, pray for me and God's word. Do it right now while you're thinking about it. I'd appreciate that. Also, when you take a break from studying with me at thebibleversebyverse.com, you can go to the front page and click the donate button 
and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead, because that also makes you a part of this ministry. Until next time, so long, everyone.